Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and in today's on shape step-by-step -step tutorial, we're gonna take a look at a tier one model. Now this model is actually kind of right between tier one and tier two, and I think this will make for the perfect study guide for our students who are currently involved in the CAD vs. CAD Speed Modeling Tournament 2025 High School Heroes, featuring students from LaGrand High School in LaGrand, California. All of the challenges that we're doing here in the round of eight in this tournament are tier two challenges. So this model today should be the perfect level to help them prepare for their upcoming matches. If you wanna see those upcoming matches, you can join us every Friday in January. We're gonna be live streaming this tournament right here on this channel. So let's take a look at a tier one challenge from the Too Tall Toby practice models library. We go to tooltalltoby.com. We click here to get started with free practice models. And here we can see we've got a repository of over 130 2D to 3D challenges where you can use any 3D CAD system and try to take a 2D drawing and turn it into a 3D model and then calculate the mass of that model correctly based on the material information, the material density. Well, there's about 20 challenges in here that are free for anyone with a free Too Tall Toby account. And then if you really like the app, if you really enjoy these challenges, you can upgrade to the Practice Models Premium membership, and that will unlock the entire library. Well, one of these challenges that's in here that's totally free for everyone is this one here, 24-04-02. So I'm gonna click here to practice, and then we can see that 704 people have successfully completed this challenge. So let's see if we can become number 705. So I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom here, click here to begin, and go! What is the mass of this part in x.x pounds? Ooh, this one is in IPS, which is inch, pounds second so all these dimensions here are going to be in inches so that's going to be really important to remember as we get started with this challenge and as we get started with this step-by-step -step tutorial now this is a tier one challenge so usually that means it'll only take one sketch to do everything and so i think that sketch will probably look something like this here on the front plane we'll create a sketch that looks something like this maybe we'll include this circle in that first sketch we will use a revolve command to revolve that outer shape and then we can use Use that circle to do an extrude remove and then we should be good to go we should be done so the trickiest thing about this model is going to be setting the units correctly and maybe creating that first sketch that first sketch is a little bit complicated but we'll show you some good tips and tricks to help you get through that so let me move this over to my second screen let me bring up my clock here and here we go let's get into it here with this challenge i don't think we need to see the whole drawing here so let me just move this over a little bit we'll just kind of show the key dimensions here from that that drawing hopefully that'll be uh, enough for everybody to kind of follow along with on this challenge so here we go let's go into on shape we're going to say create we're going to create a new document here in on shape we're going to call this 24-04-02 space dash d-r-a-m-m-e-l trammel base okay and we're going to say create public document and then the first thing that we want to make sure we remember to do is go into on shape go up here to the top where you've got this hamburger menu and go down to workspace units and we're going to set our workspace units to inches for our measurements for our length and pounds for our mass when we go to do the mass properties what is the mass of this part in x.x .x pounds so now that we've got that set up, let's go to the front plane, S key, begin a new sketch, N key to get normal two, S key to bring up our sketching shortcut menu. Remember, you can customize this by doing a right mouse button and choosing customize. And then we're gonna create a line here and this line is gonna come over. And this distance is gonna be 0 0.375 over two and enter. Now, the reason I put in that dimension right away to begin with is just to make sure that my, my remaining sketch entities are somewhat in proportion. Like I don't want my first line to be way out here if it's only supposed to be uh, 0.1875. So I'm gonna make sure that that first line is the correct, the correct length so that the rest of the sketch geometry can be in proportion. Now, the rest of this geometry, I don't necessarily have to use that auto dimensioning. I could just kind of eyeball it up based on what's shown in that front view. As long as I get that first dimension correct, the rest of this should pretty much fall into place when I start going in and adding dimensions. Now, when it comes to adding the dimensions to the sketch, one thing that I like to do is I like to create an additional line down here on the bottom, and then I press Q, and once I press Q, that line becomes construction. And the reason that's valuable is because if I, for example, if I take this dimension and I delete it, let's get rid of that 0.1875, and then do another S key dimension, 
and then create a dimension from this point to this line, I can cross over that line before I left click to drop that dimension. That creates what's called a doubled dimension. And that's really helpful when you're working with revolved features because you wanna show the diameter and the diameter is what's called out on the print. So I'm gonna do the same thing here with this vertical line. I'm gonna click that vertical line. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna click this, this construction line. And then here you see I'm moving my mouse, but I haven't left clicked yet. Well, as soon as I move to this side of the construction line, I get that doubled dimension. So that dimension is gonna be one 1.5 and then I'm going to create a dimension here from this point so I'll single click this point I'll click on that construction line I'll move across the construction line single click that's going to be 1.25 and then I can create a dimension here that goes from the base of the model up to the very top of the model here. That distance is going to be 3.5. I can create a dimension here that goes from, let me, hit, let me hit escape here. See, currently I'm in the dimension command. You can see it's light blue. So I hit escape. Now I'm not in that command. Let me just drag this geometry kind of down and into place here. And I can then S key dimension. This is going to be a dimension from the upper ledge to that lower ledge. 0 0.125 a dimension here for the angle the angle here from here to here is going to be 135 135 degrees and there's going to be a dimension down here from this line to this line now this one we have to do the slash two trick so this is going to be 33 slash two or you could do the math in your head if you want but 33 slash two enter and there we go we get that 33 cut in half so that's pretty much everything for this sketch. Now, if you wanted to, like I said in the intro, you could also S key circle, and then you could choose to create a circle here. So make a circle here, and that circle is gonna have a diameter of 0 0.5. And then what I can do is I can S key dimension, and I can create a dimension here from this point up to the center of that circle. Oh, I'm sorry, I did that wrong. Let me hit escape. S key dimension from this line down to the center of that circle. Make sure you get the center and not the arc in on shape. Otherwise, you'll get the tangency point. So we'll create a dimension here, 0 0.75, enter. And of course, you don't have to type zero there uh, when you're adding those dimensions. I always do that just to make it very clear to my students. But you could always go from this line to here and then just type in 0.75. You don't have to type the zero. Uh, it's just something I, I say it out loud to make sure my students don't get lost. So if you like that, if you like saying zero before those uh, decimal points, hit the like button on this video. Always very valuable to make sure that you're clearly communicating to your students. So now I'm going to take that geometry and I'm going to launch the revolve command. So you can see the revolve command up here in on shape. Launch that revolve command. It looks kind of like a macaroni noodle. And in the revolve command, you have to give it two inputs. So the first input is the geometry from the sketch you're trying to revolve. The second input is the axis that you're trying to revolve about. So we're going to revolve about this axis here. The one thing we want to make sure of is that in our faces for the sketch, maybe you want to click the, the clear button here. So clear that. Make sure that you're getting this region and make sure that you're getting this region. So if you just did that region, it would revolve a sphere. And then make sure you're also getting this region here so that you're getting that entire body. Now, on shape, in this case, it will select the correct information automatically. But, you know, it's always good to kind of learn the best practice and learn how to do it in case you've got more odd geometry, multiple nested contours, things like that. So this upper section of the box is where you choose what you're going to revolve. And then this lower section of the box is where you choose what you're revolving about. In other words, the central line for the revolve. So you pick what, what's going to be revolved, and then you pick that center line down at the bottom. You could also use this line here if you wanted to, or if you had a line from a different sketch, you could use that. You can use pretty much anything for that revolve axis as long as it's straight, as long as it's a linear entity. So we're going to hit the green check mark here, and boom, there's our revolve shape. Now we're going to go back in the tree and show this sketch again, show that earlier sketch, because we got to grab that circle from that earlier sketch. Now, nothing is currently selected. I'm going to choose extrude, and then when I go to extrude, this is going to be a revolve, and the information that I'm going to be extruding here is a little bit difficult to select. You'll notice that I can't get in here and just select that information. So there's two ways that we could do that. One way is we could come down here to where it says parts down at the bottom, and then you can click the little eyeball. So if you come down here to where it says parts, you can click the little eyeball, and then you can see you can pick that region and that region, and you could do an extrude, and that would be a remove in both directions. The other way to do it that's maybe a little bit quicker, if you, if you show that part again, the other way to do it is when you're looking at these regions here, and sometimes this is easier if you're looking kind of dead on, 
But when you're looking at these regions here, you can press the tilde key. So this is the key that's in the upper left of your keyboard. I'm going to press it here. You'll see it in the um, uh, in the uh, overlay that I've got for my keyboard. You can press the tilde key, and that lets you select information that's kind of buried in the model. So I'm going to press the tilde key, and then I'm going to click this region here. Now, sometimes you have to uh, click right away. So click there. There we go. So And then I move over here. Now, I press the tilde key once, and then I left click in that region. So let me just do that again, just because it's kind of a, a, it takes a little bit of getting used to that workflow. So you put your mouse in this region, you press the tilde key once, you let it go, and then you left click, and now that region has been selected. Then you move your mouse over, press the tilde key, let go, and then single click in that region. And that lets you pick those regions that are on the inside of the model. So this is gonna be a through all, and it's gonna be symmetric. And Look at that. There we go. Even though this is a tier one part, there's still some really cool stuff that we can learn from this challenge. So we hit the green check mark. We move this up here. We right mouse button and we say, uh, you could say assign appearance if you wanted to. You wouldn't do this in a uh, speed run, but if you wanted to flex a little bit, you could say edit appearance and make this the same color as it is on the print. Make it like this. And uh, then what we could do is we could right mouse button on this part and we could go to assign material. And the material that we're gonna assign here is gonna come from the Two Tall Toby Custom Materials Library. It's gonna be plain carbon steel. We're gonna hit the check mark. And then down here, it's kind of behind the clock, but down here in this area back here behind the clock, we can click the mass properties and then we can click on this part. And we can see we're coming up with a mass of 1.102 pounds. So let me type that in there, 1.1. That's probably all I really need to type, 1.1, but I'll just type in the whole thing, 1.102 pounds, and I'm gonna hit the green, or hit enter on my keyboard. And look at that, we did it, we got it correct. Congratulations, this answer is correct. Your answer was 1.102 pounds, it's correct with intolerance. The total time was 10 minutes, 15 seconds, and you're gonna get one point awarded on the community scoreboard. Yes, we did it. And so I'm gonna say submit here. And then once I say submit, I can scroll down and I can see some additional analytics. So it looks like my time was 10 minutes and uh, 15 seconds. So that's kind of illustrated here. The That's my time. The average time was five minutes and eight seconds. Wow, a lot faster than my time. And the current fastest time, 3-D-R-E-J-S-E-N. Wow, well done. That's a really fast time, one minute and one second. And so then I can scroll down. I can see some additional analytics here. I can even see what the different CAD systems were from the people that were getting this done the fastest. So this guy was using Fusion 360. Nice. CSWE Victor, that's our former world champion using SolidWorks, one minute, 18 seconds. Wow. Rambros, another former world champion using Fusion 360. Wow, wow, wow. Aaron C, our third place finisher in the world championship using SolidWorks. So we got users using all kinds of different CAD systems here in the top 10. That is absolutely awesome to be able to see uh, so much variety of this app. And look, if you're doing this app and, and you get a time that's a little bit slower, like 10 minutes and you want to go a little faster, you could always hit the try again button and you could try again and see if you can do that model a little bit faster the next time. Maybe try and get under that average time. But for now, I'm happy. We now have 705 people who have completed this challenge. And if you want to give it a try, you can become number 706. So let me know down in the comments if you learned anything about Onshape in this video. Be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. And of course, be sure to sign up over at TutalToby.com for a free account. And then if you really like the app, you can upgrade to the Practice Models Premium Membership and unlock that entire library. I will look forward to seeing everyone in the next Tutal Toby tutorial.